Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is about astronomical sketching. I'm making this video at the request of one of the viewers, Jay Halloween. Humans have been drawing and sketching objects in the night sky for thousands of years. Some scientists believe that a bull drawing in the Lascaux Caves in France from 17,000 BC represents the constellation Taurus the Bull, with the Pleiades depicted above it. Patroclus from 1000 AD, found at the ancient Pueblan ruins at Chaco Culture in New Mexico, may depict a total solar eclipse. And in 1610, Galileo sketched Jupiter's moons, sunspots, and the phases of Venus. A couple of years ago, I began working on my own sketches of the night sky to something more formal than the rough sketches I had been making in the margins of my astronomy logbook. It's difficult to describe or accurately depict what one sees through a telescope. A photograph bears little resemblance to what you will actually see through the eyepiece of your telescope. And it also gives a false impression of what you can expect to see. But the, I'll call it scratching I have been making in my logbook margins was hardly representative or presentable of what I was actually seeing in my telescope. Many people have told me that they're unable to sketch celestial objects. I'm left-handed and crippled with atrociously bad handwriting. In the third grade, I was given a C in handwriting, one of only a handful of Cs I received in school. Devastating. My handwriting is still very bad to this day, to the point that often I cannot read it myself later. And while I'm good at deductive reasoning, problem solving, debating, math, and science, I consider myself disabled when it comes to making art. The beauty of sketching and recording what you see in a telescope, though, is that with practice, anyone can do it, including me and you. So, let me explain how I create my astronomical sketches. First, let me differentiate between sketches and drawing. Mine are sketches. I would describe drawing as what real astronomical artists do, such as the highly gifted Howard Banach or Mel Bartels or Jeremy Perez, just to name a few people who are highly skilled at astronomical drawing. Their drawings take hours or even days at the eyepiece. What I do takes maybe 15 minutes. Mine are sketches. Theirs are drawings. And mine, I limit to sketches because I make them to help show in my videos what I'm seeing in my telescope as accurately as possible. And since I'm making them as part of a presentation, I can't really spend hours on a single object. And as I already explained, I do not possess any or very many artistic skills. Well, my videos are my art. So for astronomical sketching tools, I keep it very simple. I use the observation logbook that someone gave me, or also use pre-printed forms that I downloaded from my astronomy club's website to help me organize my observations. I record the date, the time of the observation, the equipment used, the telescope, the eyepieces, the magnification, the sky condition, seeing and transparency, and the object. I write a short description of the object and I note any other notable occurrences or other things such as a moose in the meadow, a hooting owl, coyotes howling, a sudden bright meteor or fireball or other such things. The sketch is on a separate piece of paper. I created a template with a circle of about 72 millimeters in diameter. Some are on white paper and some are on black stock paper that I might use depending on the object. This circle represents the eyepiece field. 
in which I sketch the object and the surrounding star field. The tools I use are very simple. Some people like to use mechanical pencils of various size lead from 2H to HB to 6B, which goes from very light to very dark. But I just use a fat Ticonderoga number two or HB pencil. I use white gel pens if I'm gonna use black stock or colored pencils. And for dark nebulae, I use black chalk. Be careful though, because it can rub off easily. When using white paper, a thick barreled number two pencil is comfortable to grip and I can even hold it with gloves on. And the lead is easy to apply to the paper and to manipulate. The only other tools for sketching on white paper that I use are a blending stump and a good eraser and a pencil sharpener. I have a clipboard to hold my paper and I bought a clip-on, very dim light that clips to the clipboard. To hone your technique, try using your pencil to sketch an object during the day. Using a photograph, it doesn't have to be a very good photograph, but use it to experiment with how the pencil performs on the paper and how various pressures of your hand with the lead look on the paper and whether that replicates what you see in the photo. When you actually go outside, be sure to properly dark adapt your eyes like you normally would. But when it comes to sketching, you'll want a dimmer red light than you might normally use. You'll want a light that dims because when you use a red light, you'll be amazed that it does still interfere with what you see in the eyepiece. Try to keep your light pointed strictly down to the paper so that it doesn't interfere with what you're seeing in the eyepiece. After you make a few marks on your paper and go back, you're not going to see as much. Even with the red light, it will still interfere. White paper works well for most objects, but for some objects, I prefer black stock because it's easier to show dust lanes and nebulosity. Next is time to choose your object. To start, choose something easy, not a globular cluster with thousands of stars. Choose something bright and then something that's easy to find and easy like the Dumbbell Nebula or the Pleiades. And decide whether you want a wide field sketch, something like the Pleiades rising over a mountain or you want something deep sky like the Swan Nebula. And once you've decided on your subject. Take a good long look at it in your eyepiece before marking anything on your paper. After you've had a good long look, now you can start to sketch the brightest stars inside the circle. I don't mark out the circle into quadrants, but I divide it mentally into a clock with 12 o'clock at the top, 3, 6, and 9, and those are my quadrants to make sure that the stars are properly located. Start with the two brightest stars. Try to make sure they're properly located in your circle and work from there. Look for patterns in the stars, triangles or other patterns and shapes. The relative brightness of each star is easy to reproduce. You use your hand pressure and your pencil hardness on the paper to indicate the brightness of the star. A light jab represents a faint star, while a fatter application creates a brighter star. Because most galaxies and nebulae and star clusters are subtle objects, a light touch is essential to produce a realistic image. A few strokes with the side of your pencil in the rough shape of the object is all that's required and then use your index finger in a back and forth motion or circular motion to smudge the lead into the desired shape and intensity. And to represent the brighter core of say a globular cluster, you apply more lead as necessary. Sometimes you can scratch on the outside of your circle and use that to smear with your finger. If it's too cold to remove my gloves, I smear the lead with a blending stump instead. I usually start from the middle of the object and work my way out, but if working from the periphery 
and working your way in works for you. Do what works for you. But try to see as much as possible with your eye at the eye piece before going to your page to put pencil to paper because you will not see as much once you stare down at that paper for a while and sketch. You may need to use observing techniques to bring out the object, such as averted vision or jiggling your telescope. And also, it's okay to change the magnification during the sketch to bring out more details if needed. I started with this 36 millimeter eyepiece, but I'm switching to this 10 millimeter, which gives me around 200 times magnification so that I can get more detail on the center part because there's a lot of structure I can see when I get in closer at 200 times. So I can make this a little more detailed around the trapezium. Once I put a few stars on my sketch, I always go back and I look again for more stars or dimmer stars that I may have overlooked the first time. But always try to minimize the time staring down at the paper. If it's very cold, make a rough sketch and try to finish the details inside or take a break to warm up without ruining your dark adaptation. Use your eye patch on your observing eye while going inside to warm up, but make yourself comfortable. If you like seating while observing, get an observing chair and dress warmly so you don't get cold. For an example, I've chosen something bright and easy to sketch, M42, the Great Orion Nebula in Orion. I'm gonna use white paper for this one, although I think black stock would work equally well. Once it's centered in the eyepiece, I'm going to take a good long look at it before starting my sketch. I've mentally divided my circle into quadrants like a clock, and I'm going to start by placing the brightest stars. And now that I have the brightest stars, I'll start on the nebula by using the side of my pencil. And when I'm finished brushing in the nebula, plus the four bright stars in the trapezium, and all the finishing touches, I'll show you my final sketch. Last night, I didn't have my clipboard or my clipboard light, so I just used my headlamp and pointed it as closely as possible to the paper so it wouldn't interfere with what I was seeing. And I just used this rigid piece of cardboard to put the piece of paper on. But I finished my sketch, and here it is. But one last thing that I do to it when I'm using white paper is that I scan the white piece of paper with my scanner and then I put it into Photoshop and I invert it so that whatever is dark on the piece of paper will be light and whatever is light will be dark. And that way it looks more like what you would see through the eyepiece. I've accumulated hundreds of sketches of deep sky objects that I've observed using various telescopes over the years, some with a little 90 millimeter refractor and some with Artemis, my 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. But they're all a record of my journey as an amateur astronomer. And at the same time, they have helped me to become a better observer. And I hope that by showing you, dear viewer, that they give you a good idea of what these objects look like in a telescope and give you a good idea of what to expect to see in your telescope. If I can do it, so can you. So get out there and enjoy the night sky and record your journey too in an astronomical sketch. You'll be glad you did. That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever, Sula, signing off.